Hi guys, this is Amnal and we are back with our Gwen tutorials. This time around we are going to take a look at monsters and their starter deck. So monster starter deck focuses on wild hunt and uh, weather effects, mainly frost. Uh, as you can see all those guys that are in the weird uh, skeletal armor, I'll are the parts are parts of wild hunts. Here are the puppies, wild hunt, hunt hounds. Here are the warriors, and uh, well, we have two special cards: one gold Imarith, uh, that when deployed deals four damage. But if enemies under the effect of frost, that damage increases to eight. So well, if you are frozen and get hit by a uh, big ass. Uh, well, mole or hammer or whatever, mace, that's I guess is, uh, you get hit really, really hard. But let's start at the top. So, uh, our leader, Eredin, leader of the Wild Hunt, uh, when we play him, we spawn him on the deck, uh, on the board with five strength as a gold card, and uh, he's going to spawn a Wild Hunt uh, unit. What spawn means it is uh, he's going to create it out of a thin air, so he's going to uh, well create either a wild hunt warrior, wild hunt hound, wild hunt navigator, or uh, there is one more card that we do not have in the starter deck, which is this wild hunt rider, but for whatever reason isn't uh, part of this deck, but well. Uh, that's what we have. Uh, so let's start with those Wild Hunt Warriors. Uh, when we deploy them, they deal free damage to the enemy. A pretty uh, common thing, but if they manage to destroy that enemy, they get boosted by two. So uh, we want to actually use those uh, free damage to kill something. Uh, Wild Hunt Hounds are, when deployed, they are going to summon a Biting Frost. Fighting Frost is our bread and butter, which it is a weather effect. We apply it to to a row uh, and at the enemy's side, and at the start of the turn, uh, all the units in that row are going to be hit by one. They will uh, take one damage, and this is a persistent effect until it is dispelled. So, if we have a Biting Frost in our deck, not in our hand, not in our graveyard, not in our collection but in our deck and we play wild hunt, hunt hound jesus it's impossible to, tell, uh, to to say for me but if we have a puppy and we we play it we will summon a, a biting frost that is play it from our deck if we ever do not have a biting frost in our deck anymore then it's not going to do anything it will just be a five string thing uh, and lastly, as far as uh, Wild Hunt unit goes, uh, we have Navigators. And they will, uh, once again, summon a copy of different Bronze Wild Hunt ally. So, in this case, if we have this guy or this guy on our board, we will be able to summon them. Uh, thing is that all those interactions are pretty awkward when you only have two cards of the type. Uh, Thankfully, uh, there are mostly, well, those guys are commons, those new guys that aren't a part of it are also commons, and, uh, and those guys are rares, uh, and of course Biting Frost is a common, so, uh, well, we'll play with this deck as it is, but uh, af after that I will give a few more hints on how to improve it, and uh, a few days later there will be a video uh, with a proper deck using this archetype uh, there is so in case you like it you will be able to uh, focus on actually uh, getting all the cards and using it as your main deck perhaps now uh, so navigators the same problem if we for example have both of those guys one on the one in our hand one in the uh, on the uh, on the board and we play this on them that's not going to work, so and this is going to be a terrible, terrible strength-free bronze unit. Now, uh, we have shorts. Shorts are 
very interesting. They have a deploy brave uh, a kind of mechanic. Uh, so if we deploy them and that six strength they have is not enough uh, for us to, uh, well, if after deploying them and adding that six, six strength they have, we are still losing. We are our enemies ahead, not tied, but ahead of us. Uh, they uh, we will get uh, four. Uh, they will get four strength. Uh, which may very well uh, give us the lead. This is the same thing. Now, Ice Giants, uh, they have 5 strength, but whenever there is Frost on the board, they are going to get another 5, uh, making them a 10 strength thing. But if the Frost is, if the last uh, Frost effect disappears, they are going to uh, be damaged by 5. We'll get that mechanic uh, checked out later. And they are not wild hunt, so we cannot use navigators to pull them. And last of our uh, units the, that are bronze is Arch Griffin. Uh, when we deploy him, we can remove the weather from the row we deployed him on. He is an agile unit, uh, so we can deploy him in, on any row. Same goes for Charles, actually. Uh, rest is uh, bound to the, uh, to the rows. Uh, as far as uh, um, bronze cards that are uh, special cards, we have other standard. Just play this, deal 7 damage to a unit. And clear skies, which uh, allows us to either rally, uh, which is get a random bronze unit from our deck, or uh, play clear skies, which uh, will uh, clear weather effects on enemy side. As for silver units, uh, Five of those, as with every other deck, are basic ones. Uh, so Scorch destroys the highest units on the board. That includes our units. So if we, for example, have two Ice Giants that are strength 10 and the enemy has a nice strength unit, this is going to kill both of our Giants. Or, for example, if they also have 10 strength unit, this is going to kill they, their 10 and both of our 10 strength Giants. It does not affect or take into account gold units, of course, because it doesn't say so here. Uh, Commander's Horn uh, boosts 5 adjacent units by 5. Uh, decoy uh, returns, returns the ally to our hand, uh, strengthens it by 3, so increases its base strength, and then plays it. Uh, there isn't a lot we can use it on, not really. Uh, we could redeploy Cleaver to lock something, well, which is another thing. So we basically disable card's abilities. Um, we could replay Wild Hunt Warriors, but that would remove the, the boost if they had one. Uh, we could replay Wild Hunt Hounds but to, to get another Frost, but we only have two in our deck. So uh, Deco isn't, isn't too great in this, in this deck. All in all, I would say like it has a it has a good potential of, of once you get a handful of uh, kegs, and get some commons, perhaps a, a rare or two. This is this can easily become a good deck, but this is pretty bad. Uh, so other silvers we have Dudu, which basically copies the strength, the power of uh, uh, of select enemy. If enemy has a high strength. Uh, Card we can uh, we can copy his strength using Dudu and uh, Neutral, which is well one of the two best cards, including that gold we discussed earlier, which is uh, uh, he will make our Biting Frost deal two damage rather than one, which is very significant. And uh, as far as the, the rest of the gold units, we have Tris Marigold, uh, deploy her, deal five damage. Uh, Geralt, a similar thing as with the Fiend, 10 strength and uh, deployed Brave, so if 10 strength, after 10 strength we are still losing, we can, uh, he gets uh, additional 3. And Royal Decree, we play it to pull a card from our deck. Alright, without further ado, because I just discussed all those uni uni cards and units, well, all those cards I've already discussed uh, when talking about Squiatel which I just realized is a bit of a... Okay. What are you doing, game? Game. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, which is a bit of an issue with the format I've chosen, but well, stick with it, I guess. At least for this one. Okay, we're going now for a single player, and we are going to play a few challenges, a few challenges. Um, so Unseen Elder and Dagon are two additional leaders that uh, monsters have access to. What we need to do to, to get them is uh, get through those three challenges. First three will give us Elder and another three will give us Dagon. If we uh, finish this we also get 25 or finish this we'll get 50 or and uh, after finishing this we'll get Unseen Elder. Well, actually, that doesn't show 50, but uh, that's what it is. And yeah. Let's start with Blood Strong. We're going to play against monsters, so uh, we are I am going to discuss another cards we encounter. Right, so Unseen Elder. Uh, he is a leader that uh, is used in Consume decks. Uh, so, deploy consume free allies, but strengthen this unit by their power instead of boosting it. So, it uh, kind of explains what uh, what boosting is, what consume is. You consume, in its basic form, you consume an ally uh, or a card from a graveyard or other things, it specifies what, but you consume it and uh, that card goes away uh, into your graveyard and you are go uh, the unit that consumed it is being boosted but by uh, the strength of, of that uh, of that unit. In this case he's going to consume three allies and uh, boost himself and he is as you can see a gold four and gold with a strength of four. Let's see what that entails. The gate must be secure. Any last words? Hmm, what do we want? Uh, we don't have any, any frost in our hand, which is good because we... Oh, we actually don't have... Uh, um, let's see. I'd say this is actually good. I don't want to, 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 to change anything here. So we are going, we're going to finish redrawing. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, so let me play the prize winning cow. Huh. Hmm. I think we are actually going to start off with neutral. Ouch. Okay, so he has removal. Hmm. Okay, in this case we will have to get Wild Hunt Warriors and kill it off. I should have done it earlier. Alright, uh, let's discuss what. Ah. By the way. Right, we'll discuss that in a, in a bit. So, Ghoul, just when you deploy it, it consumes a random unit from either graveyard. In this case, he consumed that neutral we had there and got boosted by four in this way. Okay, so that, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have, I should have assumed he's going to have other standards and I should have started with Wild Hunt Warrior, but I wanted to play neutral and then pull a, uh, uh, uh pull a frost. Uh, to, to, to kill off uh, the cow, that's right. Uh, Alright, so this is a perfect uh, moment to play a short. It's going to boost itself to 4 because we are losing. Okay, this is one of the crones. They work the same way of, as witches. If you've seen those, uh, you, when, if you summon one and you, the other two are in your deck, uh, those two will be uh, if you deploy one and uh, other two are in your deck, they will be summoned from the deck and uh, placed uh, right next to them. Mm, what do I want in this case? We are, what, seven behind? Okay, I'm going to play an Ice Giant. Alright, so in this case, we are going to now uh, start... Uh, weathering them. Of course the problem is that we have an elder so he's, he can simply start eating them. 
You know what? I'm actually going to lower his strength by uh, knocking him a little bit. All right. So this guy, uh, when he when you deploy him, he moves one card from one graveyard to the other, and uh, he is brave too. If if he was losing, so uh, yeah, he stole something from our graveyard. All right. Now we're going to play Eridan. We're going to play Wild uh, Create Wild Hunt Hound. And we are going to uh, put a weather on this row. And they decided to pass, alright. A bit unfortunate, but sure. Okay, let's see what the next round brings. I don't like that our situation to be honest, but well. Uh, let's see. Frankly, we won't be able to, to pull anything useful with Navigator, because we already used one of those. Let's try to remove it. Right, our turn. Mm. Actually, I think I'm going to pass here and uh, force him to play a card to, to, to get us ahead. Stone on one more card. Probably a shot. Alright, what do we want to redraw? Uh, Nothing, to be honest, because, well, we would risk getting Navigator in our hand, which would be useless. Uh, we still have one uh, Frost, so this Wild Hunt is uh, is actually pretty damn great. Let's finish redrawing. Okay, he ate something with a strength of 6. Hmm... What do I want? Um, okay, let's uh, place a chart. A chart for a chart. I think we're going to put uh, frost down here. Start working on them. Okay, so one eight the other. Mm, okay, I don't want him to, to, to eat him, so I'm going to use my uh, Trace Mary Gold to hit him for five. Damn it. Okay, so he was behind for more than ten and managed to uh, get additional value out of Geralt. Less than ideal. Huh. So we do have this Commander's Horn, so we, we don't want to use it before we play the rest of our uh, buffable cards. Uh, we could bring uh, Yusrael Decree to get Imelrith, uh, our last golden card, since I believe we... Do they really steal the, the golds out of here as well? Really? Move a card from graveyard. Interesting. Oh no, no actually we, we never play, so yeah, one is here of course. Never mind, it's late. Mm, so for that, I, I'm not going to, 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 to try to get uh, Geralt to, uh, uh, to be worth 13 and I'm just going to play this here. Well, that's less than ideal, and I think what we need to do right now is actually get in the Maris and hit this guy for four rather than for eight. 
Mm, well, now we just need to... Well, we, we kind of won. But, uh, if we lock him, he will lose his resilience. It's it's a first turn, so it doesn't matter, but... Yeah. Why should I help you? Alright, so he, uh, he ate them and... Uh, uh, now he's he's a gold unit, so uh, if we wanted to to hit him with this guy, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. And that was our end game. Yeah, that that was fairly easy, but we uh, we are pretty lucky in not getting useless hands. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, let's play one more. This time we'll learn about Nekas. All right. I, I don't think I like explain this time around what resilience is, but it basically allows them to stay for another round. Why should I help you? As dead as a Krisa. Right. Um, this is okay. This is okay. I think clear skies have to go. But so does biting frost. Um, I like that. Uh, not sure about decoy to be honest. Uh, but we'll be able to, to lock uh, things with Cleaver twice, and that may be quite useful for, for Nekas, so let's leave it as it is. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, one of the crones was in, uh, in his deck, and uh, sh she got summoned. Uh, annoying. We're going to start with a trot. Hmm. Well, we are actually going to use that on a trot. Uh, okay, so what happened? Mm. What happened here was uh, the trot uh, was deployed and strengthened by four because it was six to sixteen, right? And uh, he got hit by 7, uh, from 10 to 3. And then I used Decoy uh, to, to return him uh, to my hand. After returning, he was with he was strength 10. And uh, what, uh, what that resulted to is uh, I played him and once again strengthened him by 3 to 13. But since it was then 13 to 16, uh, he was once again strengthened by four. So, actually, haven't thought of that <laughs> earlier, but yeah, Vicar can be, as you can see, pretty decent for shorts. And that's, uh, of course, the fire that we returned him to hand he completely negated the seven damage, damage he got. Hmm, what do we want? So, uh, so this thing is going to boost itself by one every time something consumes something and when it dies it is going to summon a necker so what uh, what we want with this one is to lock him because we don't want another neckers coming out here oh shit wow okay so this guy uh, he is being deployed and look at three random bronze units from your opponent's deck you choose one and consume it, and getting its strength. And he consumed our Ash Griffin, asshole. Uh, right, I think it's time to get our frost going. Right there. I'd be the best and last. Okay. So I don't want it to get too ahead because then he will, uh, from what I've seen from last week, few games, if if you are winning too much, they they are going to uh, to pass. Uh, but well, 
I guess this is the, the only proper option right now, so we'll see what he does. Right, so he played. That's cards played. Do we see? Um, so, uh, Neko Warrior, uh, you choose a bronze ally uh, and create two base copies of it uh, in, in the bottom of your deck. So, of course, well, of course, in this case, the only option was the Neka, which is basic combo. You, you, for example, put two Nekas on your on your table, and then when uh, uh, the Neka dies, the uh, one more uh, comes out of the graveyard, and all of those uh, comes out from the deck, and all those snackers in the in the graveyard are will continue to become bigger every time something is consumed. Mm. What do I want now? I should have. So that was uh, one of the reasons I actually thought about killing that necker to prevent them from using uh, necker warriors. I think I'll just There's going to no do. It. Going to do it now, on an off chance that he actually has another of the another Neko Warrior. All right, so he finished. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Mm. What do we have here? We definitely want to get rid of Watan Navigator because, uh, well, we do have Watan. Uh, Hound, but we already used one, and as for uh, so we won't be able to use it uh, to any useful end. Oh. Nothing too impressive. Uh, let's see, what do we want? I think I actually want to pass here. And allow him to to get uh, to use one of his cards to uh, for us to have the the last say with our scorch. So once again, we are going to go for the third round, and that's okay. So he indeed had another Neko warrior, or well, he, he might have picked it up, but yeah. Huh, okay, do we want a Scorch? Oh, and do we want Doodoo? So, I mean, one or the other, both just do not compute. Um, I think we'll... Okay, that's, that's better. And... He just ate that 17 chaw that we had. Um, since he can eat this guy outright and get uh, just turn this that can be scorched into that, which cannot because it's gold, uh, we are going to just scorch outright. Let's see, I'm not sure where do we want to put uh, put our weather. I think we'll... Okay, I will we'll risk it and put it here. Nah, that's a problem with Akimaras. Okay, we're going to kill this Akimara outright. Any last words? Hmm... Now we are going to put a neutral here. Okay, that's that's a fairly useless Akimara. Mm. Yeah, we'll wait for the next thing and I'll just play Geralt. We won't be able to use Brave anyway. Alright, so I will keep him down by Looking at that Akimara to one. So uh, Akimaras are agile. Yeah, he was only able to uh, absorb one. He's of course, I mean, this AI is playing of course poorly. Uh, because, well, uh, at some point in the first round, he, he would be able to consume a lot of things that were under weather. And, well, we're going to use that. Uh, 
you don't need to, but you kinda want to. So uh, we'll get Wild Hunt Run uh, Rider, which uh, I'm going to explain. So uh, all right. So uh, at the end of the turn, uh, if we are uh, at the end of the round, I'm sorry. So uh, when uh, both players pass uh, around. And, and we are losing, this guy is going to get resilience. So he's going to stay for one more round, but only if uh, if we are losing. So, And of course, since you can only lose one turn, that's only going to, uh, to work once. And uh, Tria. This effect works if all three, as you can see here if you hover over it, trigger this ability when three unlocked copies of this unit are present on the same row. So if you have, if I were to have two more wild, wild hunt riders, they would, uh, as you can see, boost themselves by one at the end of the every turn, which is a fairly powerful uh, thing. But uh, actually, not uh, those cards aren't a part of our uh, starter starter deck. And well, our last card was this uh, commander's horn. If you watched my Skirtle video, you you probably realized that the Commander's Horn is working much better in this deck than it was working in, in Skirtle. So we we can stack our rows pretty decently compared uh, compared to to the elves. Also, well, this uh, this archetype we were fighting against wasn't as aggressive as uh, as Skirtle. Right, so I think that's about it uh, when it comes to, to gameplay. I think we, we, we get the gist of it, what we want, what we don't want on our hands, and just uh, especially keep in mind uh, how the navigators work, and that you don't want... Uh, let's just jump back into the deck uh, uh, to, to hammer those points. So, basically... Uh, you have to keep in. Uh, you have to remember how many copies of uh, your wild hunt things are in your own, are left in your deck. You definitely, uh, the last thing you want is to have wild hunt navigators on your hand and nothing to use them on. That's just you know, that's terrible. Three points, uh, bronze is about as good as no card at all. Uh, same thing with uh, Wild Hunt Hounds. You don't want to have bitter, uh, Biting Frost in your hand. You want to, to play it using Wild Hunt Hounds. Because, well, if you, you play it from your hand, uh, then, well, those are just 5 strength uh, units. Compared to, well, this is a 10 strength unit if you manage to deal damage and kill something. This guy is, if played properly, which is fairly used, uh, fairly easy as you've seen, uh, you can uh, get 10 strength out of him and uh, with the use of decoy, uh, he jumps to 17 if, uh, well, if situation is right. Uh, so, yeah, what you should definitely do as, well, let's just walk through uh, what kind of... Uh, commons you would like to, to add here. So we definitely want to add one more Biting Frost. Uh, as for uh, units, I would definitely get three Wild Hunt Riders. So those are those three are the same unit. They only have three types of uh, uh, of the picture, which actually, if you look closely, made up a single bigger frame, right? Uh, so you can just put one of this one of this and one of this, but as you can see, they you cannot put the fourth guy. So you definitely want to 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 have those guys, very useful guys. Uh, probably two or three because you can get the third one with Eridin and uh, using their resilience to uh, is is going to be uh, be a fairly nice uh, a fairly nice thing. Mm. So I would actually go with four. So you can, if you are going to lose a round, just play one of those guys, and uh, when an enemy uh, wins, uh, you will still have this guy on your uh, on your board. So if they just pass outright, like we've been doing, to force them to play one more card, they cannot because you already have six uh, strength on your on your board. So I would put uh, those three. 
I would perhaps put one more navigator and definitely one more wild hunt uh, warrior and probably one more hound. Uh, I don't know I kind of like the trolls. I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting to. Uh, ice giants I would stick to. Two. You cannot uh, you cannot pull them out and without having uh, silver weather uh, or any any other ways of increasing the, the amount of uh, frost that you're going to create. Uh, they are too reliant on you actually having uh, frost and well. You have only three uh, three types of uh, three instances of it, so I would, uh, yeah, I would limit uh, limit those guys to two, perhaps even uh, uh, remove one. Uh, so yeah, as far as things I would remove, I would probably uh, remove first light, to be honest, and uh, but leave the Arch Griffin uh, as a uh, as a removal. Although, uh, if you are going to play against uh, actual live enemies, they may have uh, those uh, gold weathers that cover the f whole board. And if that's the case, well, leave one or or even two first lights in and, well, cut on shorts and cut on arch griffins. Just keep in mind, keep it to, uh, to 15. Uh, so that's when it comes to, you know, commons uh, and easy rares that you can get. So, you know, the things that you can simply change uh, in a matter of, of opening a few, few well fairly uh, lucky but few kegs so that's like uh, one day of, of playing two 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 or two days of playing free to play now let's uh, take a look at really hope that isn't too loud because it really seems loud to me uh, collection what do you want uh, out of uh, other uh, monsters? Let's go silver. Uh, for this archetype, uh, you want, let's see. Uh, well, you may want Water Hag, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a mage card that, sp uh, that can. Uh, you play it and you decide one of three things. You can. Uh, put a rain on uh, one of the rows. It's not as good as uh, having uh, your frost, but well, uh, could be worse. Uh, you already have neutral. Uh, let's put filters to just standard guards. Mm, those cards are basically uh, consume cards, so not for this archetype. Although, uh, if you happen to have a fiend like I do now. Uh, it's it's a good unit to have if you have nothing uh, better to, to to put in your silvers, nothing that you actually need to 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 play out your your own archetype because it blocks and it deals damage. It's it's good uh, against powerful uh, single uh, po single powerful enemies uh, like something that has twenty strength or or, or so you can. Just cut it in half and uh, lock it uh, by, and possibly disallowing it to use its abilities, or for example, resilience uh, to 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 come to the next uh, to the next uh, round. So this is this is well, it's a good staple card. So I would I would keep an eye on that if you are going to open cakes. Um, as far as the rest, I would uh, say. That Yotun is definitely something to look for. Uh, you can move three adjacent enemies to this unit's row on your opponent's side and damage them by two. So you are you would basically be able to pull enemies into the uh, into the frost. Uh, a frightener uh, may may be pretty decent as well. You put a, this you it's a it's a spy. You it, uh, he allows you to draw a card. Uh, for a small price of giving an enemy 10, 10 points, uh, but what he also does is he plays him between two units that aren't gold, of course, and uh, they will move to the random rows other than than the ones they were on. So that can also uh, uh, kick them into the the frost. But on the other hand, you kind of you'd kind of want to to put something like frightener into the frost so he can get damage. So. Uh, 
it's okay. But as far as monster silver cards, that's that's it. And the the fact uh, the reason why is because you want uh, more of a neutral cards in this case. What you want are things such as white frost, which is uh, a frost then that uh, frost card that applies frost to two rows. You also want Aeromancy, which is a weather, uh, which allows you to play any weather card from your deck or, which is more important, from your graveyard. So, for example, you have White Frost, you play it uh, in one turn, then you, for example, pass the second turn, and in third turn, you are able to pull it out of your of your own graveyard and play it again using Aeromancy. So, those are two are very much staple for a uh, Wild Hunt themed deck. As for more the de more of the details, we are uh, what you would like to act is Cleaver, uh, replace him with a fiend. Uh, Dudu, I don't think it's, it's it's a good card. You can put things such as Iris, which uh, Iris uh, actually you 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 put him in, her on the enemy board in one in one of your frosts, and uh, once she dies and she only has free strength. Uh, all of your units are going to get boosted by three, so uh, it's it's a fairly nice card to have uh, as a uh, in in your weather deck. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, in in a few days, once I gather all the cards, I need to open all the cakes and stuff. Uh, or perhaps in a week or two, depending on how how much time to play I will have, because uh, well, actually quite a lot of cakes comes from well playing. Uh, I will create a, a new video with actually a proper competitive, uh, full, proper cards, uh, wild hand deck. And uh, so, if you like this this type of archetype, uh, there will be something for you to strive for. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. And well, there are two factions down, free to go as far as starting uh, decks are concerned. See you then. Cheers.